to take your thought, there was always tension between Dusty and Ric Flair because Rick was from the Carolinas. I mean, he that's that's what launched his career. He he became from there one of the greatest, if not the greatest, champions of all time. But what would happen is that Dusty, the one thing that they would say about Dusty is that Dusty has to go over every night. And and with with Flair, he would go to Jimmy Crockett and or, or he would, yeah, he would go to Jimmy Crockett and say, oh man, he's, we're going to, business is good now, but it's, we're, it's short lived. We're going to die because Dusty's ego is out of control. He's beating me every night after he beats me a couple of times. What's, what's, you know, what's left. And so, um, I would then, I would get with Jimmy Crockett and I, I, cause I would hear, I would hear Rick in the locker room on our side. And then I would hear Dusty on the other side too, because I had a good personal relationship with Dusty. So I understood the big picture that we had to have balance. And it was hard for me to go to Dusty and rein him in just because that's not how our relationship was, was framed. What I could do was go to Jimmy Crockett and say, Jimmy, and, 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 this is not something I would do every week. <laughs> Excuse me. It's not something I would do every week. It, it would be maybe once every six months that all of a sudden that I'm here in flair in our dressing room every night talking about, Oh, our business is going to go down the toilet. We, you know, Dusty's beating us. He's beating us, his ego. And once he beats me, beats me, beats me, how are we going to get the heat back? So I'm having to listen to that. And then Rick would, you know, kind of say, well, can't you talk to him? <laughs> and I didn't want to say, yeah, I can, but no, I can't. You know, I mean, it's uh, my relationship was not such the dusty to, that I could sit him down. And and, and uh, so I had to do it in a subtle way to go to Jimmy. And about every six months it would happen, maybe a little bit longer sometimes. But I'd say, Jimmy, can I have a couple minutes of your time? And he'd say, yeah, come in, close the door. And the conversation would stay just between him and I. And I would tell him, because I'm in the in the dressing rooms every night, that I I can hear what Flair is saying. I can see what's taking place. And the, the situation was about to boil over. And business was so good that we needed to figure a way to try and keep balance. And so I would go to Jimmy privately. Jimmy would tell Flair, say, Rick, come on over to the house tonight for dinner. And that was a big deal to Rick to have Jimmy and Myra have Rick over his house for, for a dinner. And then he could have a private conversation with Rick. Jimmy also could go in with Dusty, close the door with Dusty. And he knew to how to have a conversation with Dusty that no one else was there. Jimmy was still the boss. He was the guy signing the checks. So Jimmy in his own way could kind of address some things with Dusty that nobody else could. And Dusty never knew, the same as Flair never knew, that that I was talking to Jimmy, had a great relationship with Jimmy, and then Jimmy would then, he knew what to tell Flair, bring him over to the house, have dinner. You know, Rick would, you know, Rick would, he'd come to Justin and say, oh, last night said it was like old times. Jimmy had me come over his house for dinner. And oh, man, and and he would be good. And then he would, Jimmy knew, knew how to talk to Dusty, too. And, you know, stroke Dusty in, in the way that he could have. And it, it was uh, it was an unbelievable run that we had for a couple of years. Uh, uh, here's something. I wish I had read Dusty's book before he passed. Because JJ and I love Dusty, and you know what what he's talking about how he had to go over there and smooth things out. Mm -hmm. You could get on Dusty's bad side, meaning JJ or me, very easily if you approached him, and it was like he thought it was a personal affront. It happened to me a lot. It happened to James a lot. He was very sensitive on a lot of issues. 
And I think the way James would handle things, and that's the other reason. Maybe Dusty didn't outwardly know what James was doing for him, but he could tell that somebody was talking. Dusty was no fool. He would figure it out. It was James because Rick would cool down. I was there that and uh, that era, and I was in the heel dressing room, and I was hearing that every night and i would see look at james and he'd be just taking it in i could see the wheels turning but he wasn't going to go over and tell dusty and i wasn't going to go over and tell dusty because james and i had a bond that what we what we heard stayed with us and it was the only thing difficult about dusty was walking around them and walking on eggshells sometimes and keeping them him on the right track politically because he there was a bit of a rivalry for years and I don't mean just a little rivalry with him and Flair about the belt about Rick being a great performer but Dusty being the great mind, and there was a. I feel. Do you feel that James? There was a little bit yes. of a competition amongst them. Oh, absolutely. And, yeah, and Jimmy Crockett probably had to do the same thing with Dusty once in a while, calm his ass down. Yeah. So yep. I mean, and he could do it because he was signing the checks. I could yeah. not go in and say to Dusty what Jimmy would. And you have to have a guy like James that knows how to bridge personalities. But it is, it's so much different now because everybody's on a contract and they know what they're going to get. I mean, guys, if back in the day, if you were working with someone and you found out that he got $100 more, there was shit to be paid. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.